And this is a Fox's Alert. Welcome to Hannity. Tonight, the destroyed Trump media is spiraling out of control by manufacturing made up stories, spreading lies like we have never seen before. Fake news, CNN, conspiracy TV, MSNBC and other so-called news outlets have created what is an informational crisis that affects every American. It is so egregious, so damaging and so dangerous to you, the American people. President Trump is now calling it a, quote, stain on America. We're going to dissect tonight the anatomy of these fake news smears meant to damage and destroy the president you elected. Now, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, he will join us with reaction. And he has a major announcement that you're going to want to hear. And also tonight, an explosive Fox News report. The wife of the now demoted DOJ official who met with Fusion GPS worked for the opposition research firm that produced the fake news anti-Trump Russian dossier during the 2016 election. We'll have more on that breaking news tonight. And an ISIS-inspired terrorist with a pipe bomb strapped to his chest, exploding the device in the heart of New York City during morning rush hour today. Sebastian Gorka is here to explain how Americans have to get much tougher in this war on terror. But first, our breaking news opening monologue. We have been telling you since 2007 and 8 that literally we have fake news operations in this country. Liberal, mainstream, destroy Trump media. They have a vendetta and they're showing it every day. Their number one goal is to damage and destroy the president you elected and clearly by any means necessary. And spreading fake news helps them to do this. Now, we've been saying since 08, journalism in America is dead. But what is happening now is far worse, more destructive, more than anything we could have imagined. This is now outright propaganda every day. For example, on Friday, fake news, CNN, They go wall to wall, breathless reporting on a story. It turns out to be a big fat lie. Now, the Clinton News Network falsely claimed that Donald Trump Jr. received an email on September the 4th, 2016, that gave him special access to hack DNC emails that were later released by WikiLeaks. Unfortunately, the report, as usual, completely wrong. Here's the truth. The email that was sent to Donald Trump Jr. was actually dated September 14th, not 4th. 2016, which is the day after WikiLeaks put out the DNC documents. Now, fake news, CNN, they hype the story as the big smoking gun about Trump and Russia collusion and claimed they had not one but two sources verifying this false claim. Take a look at CNN's original fake news reporting. CNN has exclusive new details about a message sent in the final stretch of the 2016 campaign offering access to hacked WikiLeaks documents. This email on September 4th, 2016 was sent to Donald Trump, then candidate Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr. and others in the Trump organization. The timeline is important here because on September 4th, that was after months after the DNC was hacked and after their own uh, emails became leaked. And it was a month before Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta's emails uh, were leaked by WikiLeaks. If uh, this was an attempt uh, to give stolen emails, hacked emails, to the Trump campaign, and the Trump campaign acted on it, you would have uh, an argument that they were then in possession of stolen property, (coughs) property they knew to be stolen. Now, that can be a crime under federal law. It clearly can be a crime, by the way, under New York law. Uh, Crime, crime. No, not quite. Now, it didn't take long for the rest of the sheep and the liberal press like Conspiracy TV, MSNBC, to take CNN's fake news and spread it to their Trump hating audience. You can't make this stuff up. Watch this. This is coming into our our NBC newsroom right now. Congressional investigators are trying to figure out who sent an email that gave Donald Trump, his son, and others a decryption key for hacked WikiLeaks documents. This was about September 2016, right in the middle of the campaign when WikiLeaks was putting out some documents, hadn't put out other documents. Remember, the Russians had hacked the Democrats and handed this stuff over to WikiLeaks. It goes to the heart of the collusion question, right? Because WikiLeaks was essentially acting as an agent of Russian intelligence, publishing hacked emails that hurt the Democrats and helped Donald Trump. So fake news, CNN's story about Donald Trump Jr. and WikiLeaks, it was a lie. In fact, CNN's report was so outrageous, other news outlets started calling them out, even the Washington Post. That gets interesting. Now, CNN was caught red-handed. They were forced to correct the record. Now, keep in mind, this is the same CNN. They use the motto, facts first. So we have a question tonight for the head of CNN, the chief of fake news, Jeff Zucker. 
Jeff, are you proud of your network? By the way, not the first time this year. Do facts come first, Jeff Zucker, when your network repeatedly tries to smear and slander the president with outright lies? You have become nothing but an extension of the DNC. And I have to tell you, that Donald Jr. story was devoid of facts. And after being humiliated on Friday, Zucker then sent his stenographer, Humpty Dumpty, Brian Stelter, to try and clean up this whole mess. Now, instead of profusely apologizing like he should have, Humpty Dumpty tried to use his network's complete and utter fake news failure to attack President Trump. That's a nice way to try and fix it. Watch this. With ABC's suspension of Raw still in the headlines, I asked CNN if there would be disciplinary action against Raju or his co-writer, Jeremy Herb. A spokeswoman said no, because the reporters followed CNN's standards process, which means that the anonymous sources they were using for the story were vetted and okayed ahead of time. Now, the sources had been reliable in the past, but they were not this time. On Friday night, President Trump seized on the recent corrections at a rally in Florida. Look, reporters, journalists make mistakes. Our record as journalists in covering this Trump story and the Russian story is pretty good, especially uh, compared to the record of Donald Trump uh, and his uh, serial lying. Now, he is a bitter partisan. Now, it's even pathetic by fake CNN standards. Now, earlier today, the White House press secretary, Sarah Sanders, schooled, absolutely schooled. This is a one-on-one on how to be a press secretary. CNN's very aggressive and opinionated and biased Jim Costa after he tried to defend the network's false reporting. Watch this. And I would just say, sir, that, that journalists make honest mistakes, and that doesn't make them fake news. But uh, the question that but when I when journalists make honest mistakes, they should own up to them. Uh, sometimes, and a lot of times, you don't. But there's a difference. There's a very big. I'm sorry, I'm not finished. There's a very big difference between making honest mistakes and purposefully misleading the American people. Something that happens regularly. You can't say I'm not done. You cannot say. You cannot say that it's an honest mistake when you're purposely putting out information that you know to be false. Now, fake news CNN isn't alone in spreading lies and fake news aimed at hurting the president. A Washington Post reporter was forced to apologize this weekend after tweeting out this highly misleading photo about the crowd size at President Trump's rally on Friday. Turns out that image that you see right there, that was taken well before President Trump ever stepped on the stage. And President Trump responded to that fake news report by tweeting out photos during his speech that showed a packed house and writing, quote, oh, very different. Uh, at Dave Weigel over at the Washington Post put out a phony photo of an arena empty hours before I arrived at the venue with thousands of people outside on their way in. Real photos now show, as I spoke, packed house, many people unable to get in, demand apology and retraction from fake news Washington Post. The president added this, quote, Dave Weigel of the Washington Post just admitted his picture was a fake, a fraud, showing an almost empty arena last night in my speech in Pensacola when, in fact, he knew the arena was packed, as shown also on TV. Fake news. He should be fired. Now, that photo is the perfect example of how the destroyed Trump media, the biased media in this country, attempts to embarrass, delegitimize this president over insignificant, superfluous things at every turn. And just like in other examples, this one blew up in the fake news media's faces because the truth eventually, hopefully, does come out. And because President Trump, he refuses to sit back and let the media spread lies day in and day out. But for the press in this country, nothing is too small and too petty. They will literally attempt to use anything and everything to attack the president. Take a look at this headline from The New York Times this weekend, quote, inside Trump's hour by hour battle for self-preservation. Now, The Times, the so-called investigative reporting over there includes explosive information like the president has up to 12 Diet Cokes a day. That's pretty laughable. It's right up there with CNN's two scoops of ice cream for him, but only one for his guests. Now, the other bombshell fact from the New York Times report claims that President Trump watches up to eight hours of television a day. Now, President Trump rightfully blasted the paper by tweeting, quote, another false story, this time in the failing New York Times that I watch four to eight hours of television a day. Wrong. Also, I seldom, if ever, watch CNN or MSNBC, both of which I consider fake news. I never watched Don Lemon, who I once called the dumbest man on television. 
bad reporting. The media is, in this country has a massive credibility crisis. Look, look at the headline, recent Politico morning console poll. 46% think the media make up stories about Donald Trump. The American people don't trust the media anymore, and nor should they. It's because they're constantly, regularly peddling an agenda and fake news. Now, here's another couple of examples. Now, last week, both Bloomberg and Reuters, they ran wild with that story, claiming that the special counsel, Robert Mueller's team, had subpoenaed President Trump and his family's bank records from Deutsche Bank. Now, President Trump's legal team, they shot down those rumors, and eventually Bloomberg and Reuters had to admit they were wrong yet again and issue corrections. And if you think that's bad, there's, of course, last week, ABC News' Brian Ross. Well, he takes the crown for pushing fake news because earlier this month, Ross claimed that General Michael Flynn was prepared to testify that candidate Trump ordered him to contact the Russians. Take a look. And it certainly would seem to suggest that Michael Flynn had a fair amount of information to offer the special counsel in return. That's right, George. He has promised full cooperation to the Mueller team. He's prepared to testify, we are told by a confidant, against President Trump, against members of the Trump family, and others in the White House. He is prepared to testify that President Trump, as a candidate, Donald Trump, ordered him, directed him to make contact with the Russians, which contradicts all that Donald Trump has said at this point. Then hours later, Brian Ross was forced to admit that he was completely wrong and he attempted to correct, correct the record yet again. This is an epidemic. Watch this. David, a clarification tonight on something one of Flynn's confidants told us and we reported earlier today. He said the president had asked Flynn to contact Russia during the campaign. He's now clarifying that, saying, according to Flynn, candidate Trump asked him during the campaign to find ways to repair relations with Russia and other hotspots. And then after the election, the president-elect asked him to, and told him to contact Russia on issues, including working together to fight ISIS. By the way, he's suspended and is no longer allowed to cover President Trump. Shocking. Now, there's obviously a huge difference between Brian Ross's original re report and what actually happened. That's why he got suspended for four weeks without pay, and he's been banned from reporting now on the president in the future. You would think with all these fake news embarrassments that maybe the media would end this hysterical and breathless ongoing daily reporting of the president and maybe just focus on facts and trying to get it right, supposedly for consumers of news. Here's the thing. The destroy Trump media, they have been getting worse and spreading more lies about Donald Trump since the minute he decided to run for president. This is not going to change. Mainstream media has now taken a point of almost zero accountability in reporting fake news. Now, Glenn Greenwald from The Intercept sums it up perfectly with this headline, quote, the U.S. media suffered its most humiliating debacle in ages, now refuses all transparency over what happened. Now, the media's hatred for the president is so profound and so extreme that nothing else matters to them. They don't care about the truth. Now, think about that. They don't care or being fair or being balanced, not biased. And by the way, we've been saying that the press is fixated on taking this president down. I believe that to be true. That's their shared mission. It's precisely why President Trump is calling this a concerted effort and a, quote, stain on America. And in that sense, the president's right. Members of the mainstream media, they're just an extension of the DNC, and they're fraudulent. Now, they're rigid, they're radical, left-wing ideologues. They masquerade. They call themselves journalists. They're not journalists. They think they're keepers of the truth. The press, remember, got caught colluding with Hillary Clinton and her campaign, and they've been doing everything possible to inflict maximum damage on the president you elected, regardless of whether it's true or not. Now, everything we've just shown you proves all of this. Now, the truth, facts, don't matter to the media. Let me put it more simply. They are morally bankrupt. They have an agenda. They don't care about the truth. The agenda is the Democratic Party's agenda, the Clinton's agenda. And as a result, the press has now created a massive informational crisis in this country. And by the way, they are doing a tremendous disservice to all of us. Joining us now with reaction, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer. I know that in the time that you were Press Secretary, you tried to get along, you tried to be nice. It seems nothing you could do would ever appease that group that was in that White House Press Corps. Am I overstating it? No, I don't think so at all. Look, I think that a free press is essential to a democracy. Uh, but mistakes like the ones that you're talking about, 
uh, undermine the credibility and the trust that the press has. And the problem is, is that, uh, that if you can't trust one story or one, one source in a story, one of these millions of unnamed anonymous sources, which stories do you believe? Which, which sources do you believe in these stories? I think that's the problem, is that you can't sort of pick and choose one or the other, which stories to believe and which stories not to, when you see these mass amount of incorrect uh, and malicious attacks on the president and conservative policies. But there's a bigger point here, Sean, which is that in the Brian Ross story, it moved markets. People lost money because of this mistake. And here's what I think the true egregious nature of this is. And what Brian Ross did in the clip that you played is something that happens all too often. They don't correct it. They don't apologize for it. They quote, update it. And that's that's a cop out. When they're wrong, they update their story and just say we have additional information. When someone else makes a mistake or adds something to it, they say that they lied or misled them. They hold everybody else to one standard and themselves to quite another. Sean, I even think it's bigger because if you look over the last year, the whole the whole Trump Russia collusion story after a year has been debunked, has not been proven true. But there is a Russia collusion story. That's Hillary. Now we know, in spite of a year of denials, that she and her, her campaign and her running the DNC per Donna Brazil and their money, they paid Fusion GPS that hired Michael Steele, that paid Russians for lies about then-candidate Donald Trump. And it spread like wildfire. Isn't that the same as colluding to influence the American people? in the middle of an election with Russian lies? Well, look, I've been in Republican politics now for over 25 years. I've seen this, whether you're talking about campaigns or on policy matters, the left-wing liberal nar narrative wins every time. Yeah, I'm not asking uh, they that, dismiss their, they I'm dismiss asking that we have Russia collusion. There's a real story. Oh, she of bought and paid for that phony, salacious Russian propaganda that got spread to influence Americans. Well, it's not just that. You look at the Uranium One deal. You look at the number of speeches that Bill Clinton gave over in Russia and got paid for. I mean, there is a clear and concrete case of what they did with respect to Russia that is entirely ignored by the mainstream media. All right. There's also something else that's happening here. You have now, if you're, for those that follow this show, you're familiar with it. And that is we have discovered that Robert Mueller's team, what, that James Comey put the fix in with this other individual that works for the FBI that we all became known about last week and that literally they're writing her exoneration without doing the complete investigation. Now, didn't the media get a little suspicious about 33,000 deleted emails in the bathroom of a mom and pop shop that it did have classified top secret special access program information on it, mishandling information is a, that type of information is a felony, destroying that information is a felony, and then just for good measure she used bleach bit and acid washed the hard drives and then busted up all the devices that were connected to that. Now, the fact that that exoneration, Peter Strzok, and James Comey wrote the exoneration before they investigated. I don't know anybody in the media that's doing their job. It's what they choose not to cover that also is corrupt to me. Well, and you also remember that the DNC largely wouldn't, wouldn't allow the FBI's to even examine their servers, and no one seemed to have a problem with that. I mean, there's a lot about what happened last cycle that I think has largely been, been swept under the rug, and, and none of the key questions are actually being asked. And I think it's amazing how when you have concrete facts on one side that should leave people to want to get a deeper understanding of what happened, that's ignored. And all of this salacious, you know, hypothetical uh, ideas is what we, sp we spend the time focusing on. I think our priorities are, or at least the media's uh, priorities are backwards right. on where the problems are. It's never been this bad. My 30th year in radio, my 23rd year here at Fox, it has never, ever, ever been this bad. All right, you have some big announcement. Go ahead, hit us with it. What well, is I, it? Is I, it good I, or bad? I think <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. And I think it's largely driven off what you're talking about right now. I looked back at the coverage of, of the campaign, the transition, and the first six, seven months of this White House and realized the stories that are being told are not an accurate represent of what Tr President Trump went through to get the nomination, to transition to the White House, and then his first six months in office. And I'm going to write a book that will come out in February, excuse me, in the summer of 2018. If you go to my Twitter feed at Sean Spicer, people can 
can sign up and keep track of, of when it's going to be published and, and get inside information. But I, I've decided that it is incumbent upon me to set the record straight and give people a real understanding of what happened through each of those crucial points in our history. This, this was probably one of the most fascinating elections ever um, in that regard, considering all of the forces that were against Donald Trump. And all the media that night that he won, it was like one big funeral. I look well, forward again, to it. Well, there, again, there's a lot of stuff that, ever, that those guys got wrong from the campaign through the oh. transition to the White House. I want to set the record straight. Good for you. All right, Sean. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. When we come back, big lineup tonight. Sebastian Gorka reacts to today's ISIS-inspired terror attack in the heart of New York City. And then later, a major Fox News exclusive report. The wife of that demoted DOJ official who met with Fusion GPS worked for the research firm during the 2016 election cycle while they were producing the fake news salacious Russian propaganda dossier. I know, we'll tell you the details. Nobody else in the media will, I can promise you that. Today, New York City was struck by terror for the second time now in two months after a suspected pipe bomb was detonated at a crowded subway tunnel. Joining us now at the very latest on this attack, Fox News Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge has the details. Catherine. Well, thanks, Sean. At 7.20 Eastern, at the height of the morning rush hour, authorities say the suspect, Akayed Ula, detonated a device described as a low-tech pipe bomb attached to his body with Velcro and zip ties. It's unclear if the device detonated prematurely or the suspect was headed toward Times Square for a large mass casualty attack. In addition to the suspect's serious injuries, at least three others had minor issues from the explosion. The FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force is on the scene and working alongside the New York Police Department. These units specialize in terrorism cases and evidence collection. Agents at this hour are drilling down on the suspect's immigration records that show the 27-year-old Brooklyn, New York resident came to the U.S. about six and a half years ago through so-called chain migration. Fox News is working to confirm whether it was under a family preference provision or an immediate relative. We are told he was just before his 21st birthday. Had he been older, he would not have qualified. Here's what has Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. We know that the president's policy calls for an end to chain migration, uh, which is what this individual came to the United States through. And if his policy had been in place, um, then that attacker would not have been allowed to come in the country. Counterterrorism source who monitors terrorist social media accounts says there was no immediate claim of responsibility by ISIS, though some ISIS-linked accounts celebrated that attack, Sean. All right, Catherine Hurridge in Washington tonight here with Reaction. Yeah. Fox News national security strategist, former deputy assistant to the president, Sebastian Gorka, is with us. It's interesting, every time, what do we learn that the... The communist mayor of New York gave up the surveillance program. We've since had, I believe, three attacks. Then, of course, we go back to the issue of uh, immigration. Then we go back to the, the president having to fight in the court so we can vet people that come from countries that do not share our values. And it keeps coming up every attack. And yet the left still supports these policies. It's hard to understand, Dr. Gorka. It truly is, uh, Sean. Uh, this should have surprised nobody. The president understands that the immigration system that he inherited is utterly, completely bankrupt. The last New York attacker uh, managed to sponsor more than 20 people on a chain migration into the United States. This jihadist was also a person who came in through chain migration. I just arrived uh, yesterday back from Australia. Australia, for example, has a completely merit based immigration system and completely strict adherence to the question of why are you coming to this country? Do you contribute to this country? And are you a threat? Why can't America have a system like Australia's is a question we have to that. answer. Because if people are caught and entering Australia illegally, let's say they're in a boat. Well, Australia is very compassionate. They will give them enough food and water and supplies so they can go get back to their destination, their original destination. Somebody is sick. They won't even take them into the country. They'll take them to a separate island and take care of them. But you're right. If we opened our borders completely, we could pick and choose. Everybody would want to come here. The best, the brightest contributors that would make society better, that don't have values that contradict our values. Why is that so complicated? How does that get so politicized? Well, look, the, the fact is uh, the left 
has tried to sell a bill of goods in where they say everybody has the right to come to America. It's insanity. If that's the case, the word America ceases to have any meaning. Remember what Hillary did, Sean. She gave a private speech that we now have the transcript of, where she said there should be no borders in the Western Hemisphere, from Canada all the way down, no borders. If that were the case, if she'd have won, the America would cease to exist as a concept, and we'd be having not just one attack every few weeks or every few months, it would be like Europe with attacks occurring every couple of days. Let me shift gears. Let me go to the issue of all of these fake news reports that I laid out in my opening monologue tonight. They're everywhere. It's almost on a daily basis. We have known a long time that real journalism is dead in the country. I said that in 07 and 08. But the agenda of the media now, they, they are actively trying to undermine and unseat and contributing to unseat a duly elected president. Forces like we've never seen aligned together. How should the president deal with it? We have a deadly combination, Sean. Your monologue is spot on. Uh, the left has created a web. I hate conspiracy theories, but if you look at what the media is doing, if you look at how things like the FBI have become politicized. Nobody's getting in trouble in the FBI for having Republican views. What's happening? They're Democrats. They, they have been in contravention of the Hatch Act. They've given Hillary kid glove treatment for things that would have sent you or I to prison. How do we respond? Leadership and we have to drain the swamp. The president has to drive the people with political agendas out of government because if you're a bureaucrat, your politics should be a private affair. They shouldn't affect policy. And the media, look, I hope it's going to be market forces. You are crushing it on cable news, your number one. As long as, you know, the market forces dictate, things like CNN will become irrelevant sooner or later. I think somebody pointed out that the Cartoon Network was rated higher. And <laughs> so I don't know if that's still true, but that was true at the time. Um, yep. What do you do in a case of a Mueller investigation where we now know that he has Clinton lovers, Trump haters, people that in the past have have not passed on exculpatory information to defendants somebody that has made up laws and it's a, a whole cadre of of people now that all have one agenda uh, what is the answer to in in your mind because i don't see an easy answer to untangle the mess of politics now that has corrupted that special counsel well, let me remind your audience and let me remind the, the DNC. The chief law enforcement officer of the United States, according to the U.S. Constitution, is not the director of the FBI, nor, it is, nor is it the attorney general. The chief law enforcement officer is the president, and right now that's Donald J. Trump. He could fire Mueller legally tomorrow if he so wished, but he would have to be backed up by the Republican Party. We need to see leadership from Capitol Hill that understand that Why November Why doesn't Jeff Sessions do that? I think Jeff Sessions is in a very difficult place right now with his very, very ill-advised decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigation. He can reassert he can reassert his power as the Attorney General, but we also have to see a broader support from, from Congress for the President, his agenda, and what November the 8th really means to America. All right, Sebastian Gorka, good to have you back. Thank, Thank you, you, Sean. All right, when we come back, you don't want to miss our next segment. We will show you some of the fake news, CNN's worst Trump-hating coverage. We'll get reaction. Michelle Malkin is here. Also, a bombshell. Fox News exclusive tonight. The wife of the now-demoted DOJ official who met with Fusion GPS actually worked for that opposition firm that produced the phony Russian propaganda, all to influence the last election. Can't make this up. Straight ahead. This is a Fox News alert. I'm Trace Gallagher. President Trump reacting to the New York City rush hour pipe bomb attack. The suspect, a 27-year-old Bangladeshi national, set off the crude device in a subway passageway, injuring four people. President Trump says the explosion highlights the need to change the type of family-based visa the suspect, Akayed Allah, obtained. Mr. Trump claims such visas, quote, allows far too many dangerous and inadequately vetted people to enter the U.S. While it's
down to the wire in the Alabama special election to fill the Senate seat once held by Jeff Sessions, who is now, of course, the U.S. Attorney General. According to a just-released Fox News poll, Republican Roy Moore is trailing Democrat Doug Jones by 10 points ahead of tomorrow's vote. It's unusually, uh, usually a win for Republicans, but Moore has been plagued, of course, by accusations of sexual misconduct involving girls. Back to Hannity. All right, earlier in my opening monologue, we showed you how liberal CNN was embarrassed on Friday over its fake news report about Donald Trump Jr. Now, sadly, this is just the latest example of fake news. Shouldn't surprise anyone. Now, CNN, MSNBC, their hatred for this president runs deep. Now, this morning, Newsbusters found yet another example of the CNN fake news network and their abusively biased coverage. Look at that headline. And, you know, just 40 minutes after today's terrorist attack in New York City, CNN just can't help themselves dedicated time to a full-blown report on President Trump's Diet Coke preferences. Watch this. Watching cable, he shares thoughts with anyone in the room, even the household staff he summons via a button for lunch or for one of the dozen Diet Cokes he consumes each day. Um, if you add this, Michael, to what his, for Corey Lewandowski, I mean, his campaign manager has a new book out about some of these very things. Corey's book is called Let Trump Be Trump. Here's what he writes in that. Uh, on Trump Force One, there were four major food groups, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Pizza, and Diet Coke. <laughs> Those are all my favorite foods. <laughs> What's the problem with that? Of course, another egregious example of the network being completely abusively biased. They're over the top coverage of the Trump administration. Let's take a look at some of the lowlights from just the past year. Take a look. I have a whole lot to say about this president's increasing erratic behavior over the past week or so. If you think you've had an earful of Donald Trump, check out what's in the ear of a beagle in Britain named Chief. Brace yourself. Is this president trying to impersonate Hugo Chavez, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Vladimir Putin? Apparently the president gets two scoops. You know, everyone else around the table gets one. Uh, and no word if there were sprinkles. He gains weight uh, according to these sources. He doesn't trust uh, people around him. He's withdrawing. Not a good picture. If I, he wants to say that, Barack Obama wants to say whatever. If George Bush says, I looked in his if eyes. If he took and a dump on his desk, you assault. would defend it. <laughs> now he's President Snowflake. OK, everything he said, oh, they're mean to me and they don't like me. And of course, it's a white lash here with reaction. CRTV host Michelle Malkin. Um, it gets even more superfluous. I mean, when you start doing reports that the inside of this particular dog's ear looks like Donald Trump. And when he eats and invites guests over, he takes two scoops of ice cream. Everybody else gets one scoop of ice cream. Oh, he drinks Diet Coke. He likes McDonald's, Wendy's, pizza and Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, so do I, and I think probably most Americans do if they're honest. And like, I mean, then you add the serious stuff to this. A, you know, a year's worth of lies, big examples of phony news. I don't even know what to make of it anymore. I'm not, sh I guess there's a reason people don't watch that network. Yeah, you know, it, it's worse than middle school girls gossiping, but that's an insult to middle school girls, I think, because the level of immaturity and recklessness of CNN has plunged to an all-time low. I think, Sean, that 2017 is a year of epic vindication for those of us who have called out CNN's bias from day one, whether it's these small and mundane stories of uh, petty criticism of Donald Trump's diet and his drink choices, or whether it's the larger uh, story here of the real collusion, as, as you've been pointing out, and the, the double standards with regard to this network. I call them the, the collusion narrative network. Uh, and of course, lately, of course, it's more corrections, not news. I mean, if you really want to know what's true on CNN, you don't watch it on the day of the news reports. You watch it the day after for the retractions to find out what's really true. You know, it's also what they don't cover. You know, to me, the fact that the Russian dossier, Hillary lied for a year and paid for the phony dossier, that's kind of big news because that was collusion, Russian lies she bought and paid for to influence the ele election. Similarly, I think it's a big deal when James 
uh, Comey and Peter Strzok are writing an exoneration of Hillary in the email server so she can go off scot-free without an investigation and hopefully they think defeat Donald Trump. You know, that's a big deal. The whole, you know, the fact that Mueller and Rosenstein and all these people knew in 2009 about bribery, kickbacks, extortion, money laundering by Vladimir Putin thugs in America, and they didn't stop it. And a year and a half later, they allowed 20 percent of America's uranium to go to this hostile regime. And then the money that flows back to the Clinton Foundation, I think those are big deals. The Mueller special counsel. You know, all of these partisan, vicious partisan prosecutors with unethical records and tactics. That should be a big deal. They're not covering any of this, Michelle. Zero. Yes. You're exactly right, and you've nailed it, that it's not just sins of commission that CNN and all of its ilk are guilty of, it's sins of omission. And it's what they don't cover and they don't report that tells you more about what their true agenda is than what they actually replay over and over again ad nauseum on air. And it extends way beyond uh, this election cycle and this particular president. It goes back decades. You and I have covered it for the past 20, 25 years, and it shows you the disingenuousness, especially of these people who have this hue and cry now about the selling out of America and national security when they've looked the other way as Democrats have sold our country out for years. Despicable. Right. It really is. All right, Michelle, always good to see you. Appreciate you being with us. When you we bet. come back, we have yet another example that proves what we have been reporting. Robert Mueller's team is hyper-partisan anti-Trump, abusively biased, and many unethical. Also a Fox News exclusive report. The wife of the demoted DOJ official who met with Fusion GPS, guess what? She actually worked for that company during the 2016 election while it was creating the fake news, anti-Trump, Russian propaganda, salacious dossier. You can't make this stuff up. We'll report it exclusively next. Today, another story that exposes just how corrupt Robert Mueller's team are. In other words, a bunch of partisan hacks. Now, on Friday, the Wall Street Journal reported that Mueller's top investigator, Andrew Weissman, attended Hillary Clinton's election night party at the Javits Center in New York City. By the way, it wasn't a party. You can't even make this stuff up anymore. And breaking tonight, a new exclusive report from our very own James Rosen and Jake Gibson. Here's the headline. The wife of demoted DOJ official worked for firm behind the anti-Trump dossier. Here with Reaction, Conservative Review, contributing editor, former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino. Also with us, former Obama economic advisor Austin Goolsby. Also, I think you're a pretty fair-minded guy, right? You'd consider yourself fair-minded? I appreciate that. Let's say, let's assume, it's hard to, but let's assume Hillary Clinton was the president. And let's assume there was a special counsel looking into collusion or in the campaign with Russia. And let's assume that the special counsel of 16 members, eight of them donated to Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and the Democratic Party, and zero uh, well, donated to the Republican Party, but zero reported to the Democratic Party. I would say probably you would say fundamentally that's fair, unfair, right? When Ken Starr was the independent counsel, okay. he was a Republican. His entire staff was made up of Republicans. Now, if people Here, like, let me finish because we got a lot of ground to cover. If people like Peter Strzok and his girlfriend, Lisa Page, if they're sending out, and they work for Mueller in this case, and they're texting each other, pro-Clinton and anti-Trump messages. Is that bias? Is that unfair? He, it seems like it was, and that, I believe, is why Mueller, a lifelong Republican, fired that person for sending those Okay, texts. and is Andrew you know, Weissman, Sean, Andrew Weissman, wait, Sean, hang on, was that Hillary's party policy. on the night of the election? And Andrew Weissman is also a guy that was overturned by the Supreme Court 9-0, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals overturned. Innocent people went to jail. He held back exculpatory evidence, and he made up laws that don't exist. Okay, is that, Sean, wait, 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 no, 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 answer the wait. specifics. Is that fair? Is Andrew Weissman a guy you want looking into, a president that you like? As you know, Sean, yes or no? the policy, Department of Justice national rules forbid you Answer the question. Andrew Weissman said you innocent can't people to the jail. Question. You're asking Mueller to do something 80, illegal, Sean. Excuse me, 85,000 people lost their the jobs. affiliation. 
All right, Dan Bongino, I'll, I'll give you a shot. allowed to ask the partisan affiliation yeah. of people who will work for him as career people. That's Unethical against the people. rules. All right, Dan Bongino. Sean, let's be clear about this. There are only two possible explanations for this sham investigation. The first, that it was put together entirely incompetently, which I do not believe because Bob Mueller is a very smart guy. The second, which should deeply concern you and everyone else, is this isn't an investigation at all. This is an attempt to nullify an election. That's exactly what this is. Why else would a smart guy like Bob Mueller, if he was aiming for a nonpartisan investigation, appoint I mean, such obvious ideologues? I mean, Sean, these aren't like people who are hiding their stripes. You're talking about Weissman, a guy who emailed Sally Yates applauding her for defying the president on his government email account. They weren't hiding this. And, and Austin, I, I, I have a lot of respect for Austin. He's a really smart guy. But Austin, you and I both know. And you, uh, this is a fact that if this was a jury and your career was on the line and these people and the story was reversed, was appointed, they were appointed to judge you, you would you would say absolutely not. You know that. Come on. The National Department of Justice rules forbid Mueller from asking the partisan affiliations or looking at whatever political so donations those people have given. So just as a lateral given, that would Let me give you the latest, the though. But we now know James Comey, and we know this guy, Bruce uh, Strzok, or whatever his name is, Stuck. He both wrote an exoneration of Hillary before they did the investigation. Now, are you going to tell me you think that's fair? No, Seriously? that guy was fired by Mueller. Okay, as soon as but he the investigation never happened. That means it never, the fix was in by Comey and Strzok. If they, uh, my understanding is Congress wants to investigate that, that's fine. Oh, okay, you was, cannot and if it was your life, I'm sure you'd feel the same way. I think you'd be more passionate. What about this new James Rosen report? Now we found out that Bruce Orr, four doors down, uh, Dan Bongino, four doors down from Rosenstein, that in fact he had met with the Fusion GPS people. Now we find out yeah. his wife worked for them. And it turned out yeah. Clinton bought and paid for Russian lies to influence the election and the American people. Yeah, I mean, it, it, is this a joke? I mean, seriously, no. is this a joke? Where where did Mueller go and recruit these people, or the DOJ in this case, recruit these people? You know, Hill Pack of the Clinton Foundation? I mean, seriously, did they go down the Clinton Foundation donor list and the Fusion GPS source list and employee list and go, hey, you know, we need you guys in the DOJ and on this special counsel. Sean, the woman worked there. She's, the, she's married to a guy who had a very powerful position in the DOJ, who, by the way, didn't feel the need like to disclose this, that this may have been a conflict of interest. And then, by the way, why wasn't all this stuff uh, told to the House Intelligence Committee a long time ago? Why so cryptic about it if there's nothing to hide? It, it, this, listen, this is, this is one big joke in the American people, you but think unfortunately it's, it's going to have real-world ramifications. So Hillary got a pass by Strzok and by James Comey. Do you think Hillary, now that we know they denied it for a year, that her campaign and money of the DNC she was running, according to Donna Brazil, that they paid for this Russian propaganda, these lies to influence the American people, is that collusion? Are you asking me or yes, sir. Me? I'm asking you, Austin Goolsby. Is that you? Yes. Uh, is that collusion? Uh, look, I, I don't. Does it we, sound I like don't collusion know what to your you? Definition of collusion is that doesn't strike me as collusion. No. If you think that there was some violation of the law, then they should investigate it, just as they are with Donald Trump. Robert Mueller's a lifetime Republican. No, 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 if no. You have there is no violation of the law with Trump. Disclosing things, they should investigate them. That, Last I'm not word, Dan. Defend real quick, them doing things. No, no, that are Austin. Wrong. Listen, Austin. With all due respect, there is no violation of the law with Trump, and you know it.